Hey everybody, Professor Davis here, and today we're going to talk just a little bit about how to draw molecules, depicting the connectivity and types of atoms that make them up. We're going to talk about five different techniques for drawing, but I want to start right away with three of those techniques. The first is the empirical formula, a formula which was used very early in the history of chemistry and contains only the simplest whole number ratio of elements. That's because this was some of the only information available to early chemists, and so naturally that's what they reported. Another technique is called the molecular formula, which gives us not just a ratio of elements, but the absolute quantity of each type of atom within the molecule. So there's a little bit more information there. And the third one I'm going to talk about right now is the condensed structural formula which is a formula which not only gives the quantities of elements making up a compound, but also how those atoms of those elements are arranged and connected to one another. Now let's take a look at how each of these three gives us progressively more information, allowing us to distinguish more and more similar molecules from one another. To illustrate how each of these three techniques gives us differing levels of information, we're going to look at three different molecules. Ethene, or ethylene, butyl ethylene, and tetramethylethylene. All very common hydrocarbons that one might encounter in the organic chemistry lab. So to begin characterizing them, let's take an inventory of all the atoms making up each type of molecule. In the case of ethene, of course, we have two carbons, four hydrogens. In the case of butyl ethylene, we're looking at six carbons and 12 hydrogens, and tetramethylethylene, though clearly different from butyl ethylene, also has six carbons, 12 hydrogens. So to construct an empirical formula for these, I use the simplest whole number ratio of the two types of elements, meaning that the empirical formula of ethene is CH2. But if I look at butyl ethylene, I have the exact same empirical formula, CH2. And for tetramethylethylene, the same is true, CH2. So we can already see the limitations of the empirical formula. It's possible for many different compounds to have exactly the same notation and therefore be indistinguishable by this method. Let's go one level up now and look at the molecular formula instead. Now the molecular formula doesn't give us just the whole number ratio, but rather the total number of each atom. So in the case of ethene, my empirical, or excuse me, my molecular formula is C2H4, while butyl ethylene is C6H12. So we can see now that the molecular formula has allowed us to distinguish these two compounds from one another. But just knowing the number of atoms doesn't give us all the information because clearly tetramethylethylene will have the exact same molecular formula as butyl ethylene. So we have to go one step farther and include even more information if we're going to distinguish between butyl ethylene and tetramethylethylene. We can do this using our third type of drawing, the condensed structural formula. Now in this case, we're going to go across the molecule uh, I'm going to go from left to right as they're drawn, and we're going to consider what's connected to each carbon within the molecule as we work our way across. And each of them gets written as its own discrete small formula within the larger condensed structural formula. Let me demonstrate. Ethene has a CH2, right, a carbon with two hydrogens attached. And adjacent to that, another CH2. So the condensed structural formula for ethene is CH2CH2. In the case of butyl ethylene, I begin with a CH2. Next is a carbon with just one hydrogen, followed by a series of carbons, each with two hydrogens bonded to one another. And finally, we end the chain with a carbon that has three hydrogens. So my condensed structural formula is CH2. CH, CH2, 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 CH3. Now let's see if the condensed structural formula can allow us to distinguish tetramethylethylene from the butyl ethylene. 
Let's start right here with this CH3. Now, the issue that we run into with tetramethylethylene is that the carbon chain isn't straight. So to convey that we have a second CH3 connected to a similar carbon, we simply put parentheses around it and give it a subscripted 2. Then we move our way through the chain, where we have a carbon with no hydrogens or other substituents, another carbon, and then another set of two CH3 groups. So the condensed structural formula for tetramethylethylene reads like this, with a CH3 twice, carbon, carbon, and then another two CH3 groups. So condensed structural formula begin to give us information about not just the quantity of atoms, but about how they're connected to one another, allowing us to distinguish between and among structural isomers like butylethylene and tetramethylethylene. Next, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about line angle formula drawing, which is really just a fast shorthand method of drawing molecules that chemists like to use when they're having a conversation or, or say working on the blackboard teaching a class because we can so rapidly construct these kinds of structures and uh, it's, it's just a very quick easy way. The way it operates is like this. Angles and ends of lines all represent carbon atoms within the molecule. Hydrogen atoms are omitted from the structure. They're never drawn in and the chemist can simply mentally fill in the hydrogens for themselves. All other atoms are represented by their elemental symbols within the structure. So this gives us again a very quick way to draw relatively complicated molecules with just a few strokes of a pencil. Let's do an example. Let's take a look at some hydrocarbons that we're probably pretty familiar with. Just the first uh, few normal alkanes. And now I've omitted methane because using the line angle formula for methane, it would be drawn as simply a dot. But ethane has two carbons connected by a single bond. So to create its line angle formula, I simply draw a line because the two termini of the line represent those carbon atoms. And it's up to my reader to mentally fill in those carbons with the remaining three hydrogens that are not depicted in the line angle formula. If we take a look at propane, notice that the interior carbon is depicted as an angle. And the two terminal carbons are, of course, the termini of my structure here. So this is my line angle formula for propane. And I can continue through butane, pentane, and onward, creating ever larger line angle formula showing only the locations of the carbons within the molecule and allowing my reader to fill in the hydrogens for themselves. Now let's take a look at three other molecules that have an atom that is not a hydrogen or carbon. We'll, we'll do oxygen. These are the structures for diethyl ether, an anesthetic, Acetone, the main ingredient in nail polish remover, and isopropanol, one of the main ingredients in rubbing alcohol. Now to draw the line angle formula for these compounds, I'll again use the termini or angles within my lines to depict carbon atoms, but I'll have to explicitly write out the oxygen atoms. So the line angle formula for ether would look like this, with my central oxygen depicted as an O, its elemental symbol. So here I've written the heteroatom out. Now in the case of acetone, again I'll have to write that heteroatom oxygen, but I also need to show the bond multiplicity. You notice that I've connected the oxygen to my structure using two lines instead of one. A clear indication to my viewer that that oxygen is a double bonded oxygen. Now we also show, in cases like isopropanol, the hydrogens which are connected to those heteroatoms for example, here we have an oxygen which is directly bonded to a hydrogen. And because those are so often involved in reactions and so important to the chemical properties of the compound, we often write them out. So these are the three line angle formula for the compounds ether, acetone, and isopropanol. As a final type of drawing, let's take a look at the perspective formula. This is a technique which gives us not only the connectivity of atoms within a molecule, 
but also the spatial arrangements of those atoms, which can be crucial to understanding the chemical and physical properties of many organic compounds. To do this, I'm going to demonstrate using the molecule butane. Now here's a 3D representation of butane. My line angle formula would look like this. And that lets my viewer know that I've got a 4-carbon hydrocarbon, and I can fill in the locations of those hydrogens for myself mentally. But what if I'm interested in only talking about these, these atoms here, which are coming out of the plane of your screen toward you? Or maybe I'm interested in talking about the ones in the back, or even the ones that are coplanar with my carbon chain as it's been drawn. Now, all of these positions are discrete from one another. So I may want to specifically talk about just one atom on the molecule and not two or three different hydrogen atoms which are all connected to the same carbon. So how do I depict that? Because my drawing in the line angle formula doesn't accomplish this. Well, the way we do this is we draw the hydrogens out. And whenever we have an atom which is protruding from the screen, we draw it with a solid wedge to show that it's coming out towards the viewer. Any atoms which are falling back behind the plane of the screen are depicted using a dashed wedge, looking something like this. So the hydrogens in the back of the screen, you can see, are depicted using a different type of bond. And atoms that are within the plane of the screen, like those two hydrogens at the end, would get a simple line just like any other line in the angle formula. Now, with this new creation, this new construct, I can point to one specific hydrogen atom on the molecule and be completely unambiguous about which one I'm talking about. And this is the benefit of using the perspective formula. The content of this micro lecture was an excerpt from a course I've been developing in collaboration with the teaching company. This course will be available in October 2014 and is 36 parts on organic chemistry. So whether you're a college student preparing for your next exam or a curious lifelong learner, find out more about my course at my website, www.chemsurvival.com. That's all for now, everyone. I'm Professor Davis. I'll see you on the next video.